confirm that we're now live streaming. Councillor Bean, would you be able to turn off your video until item six, please? Evening, Councillor Kelly. Evening, Councillor Carruthers. Evening, Councillor Ashfield. Good evening, how are you? Very good. The recording is already gone, and so we're going up live at the moment. It's informed everyone. Is that a virtual background, or are uh, you? Yeah, there's that's a picture of the council chambers. I didn't want I didn't want people to see the mess behind me. We're no, I don't really want like that. But I couldn't work it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where did everyone get these virtual backgrounds from? Um, you can actually do it within the Zoom software, but I've actually got specialist software on mine, and I've got a green screen behind me. Oh, okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, this gore is real. <laughs> <laughs> so might the children be behind me soon. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm waiting for one more counsellor. Wait, wait for one more member because uh, I've had one apology so far. Make that six thirty. I'm only waiting for Councillor Ian Tilbury. Does anybody know if he's definitely coming? We haven't received any apologies, Chair. Okay, thank you. I'll give them a minute and then start. You can join. <clears throat> As I've got a far of an empty, uh, starting uh, speech I need to read out. I'm going to start and Councillor Tilbury can join us. I am Councillor Paul Franken, the Chair of Scrutiny Committee, and I'd like to welcome everyone to this meeting, which is being held virtually in accordance with the Council rules for virtual meetings, which reflect the recent published government regulations. The meeting is being streamed live on YouTube and will also be available to view after the meeting is finished. Councillors who sat on the committee are identified by name on screen, and I will introduce the officers by name before they address the committee. Councillors are reminded, although this is meeting is being held remotely, they are regarded as being present in a meeting of the council, and they should observe the normal rules of behaviour under the members' code of conduct, and not allow members of the household to distract them during the course of the meeting. Can members ensure their mobile phones are switched off or on silent or on airplane mode? 
members of the committee will turn turn the video link on during the meeting and keep their microphones muted unless they have been invited to speak by myself as a chair. Members are reminded if they switch off the video link or move away from the camera, they will be treated as leaving the meeting and will not be able to take part in any vote taken on the item under discussion. Members can indicate their wish to speak by raising their hand and should only speak when I as chair invite them to do so. The officers present will only switch their video link on during the items they are present or will wish to, they wish to be invited to speak by me as the chair. As a chair, I confirm the name of any visiting speaker at the appropriate time in the agenda who will address the committee by audio link. Councillors should declare that they are leaving the meeting and switch off their video link if they have any disposable pecuniary interest or other personal interest in an item on the agenda. The councillors can switch on their video link when I call the next agenda item. Voting will be taken by a roll call and I will confirm the recommendation proposal to the committee before voting begins. Can each member indicate whether they are for or against the recommendation or whether they wish to abstain? Hopefully we will not have any IT problems, but I remind councillors that if their connection is lost, they should immediately advise Democratic Support Officer and use the meeting link again to access the meeting again. Right, so, so now I can, Councillor Tilbury's not, still not here. Okay, but I'm gonna carry on. Apologies for absence, I've got Councillor Coupon, uh, Capon has emailed me to say he's not feeling well and will not be attending. And I've had a substitution, Councillor Harvey is replacing Councillor Potter. Uh, is there any other, anything else? Okay. Uh, item two, get creative of interest. Uh, Councillor Miller has indicated he wishes to do, declare an interest. So. Yes, as uh, I am chair of DC and entitled to vote on DC, I'm aware that item number six on the agenda this evening is talking about up to three uh, planning applications that are in the process. And uh, if any of those came to DC, uh, I do not want to be in any way involved in item number six um, because of my, A, the chairmanship and being president on DC. I've taken advice from legal and I'm advised not to take part at all in any way, shape or form on item number six. Okay, Council. thank you, Councillor. I'm going to declare a non-pecuniary interest in the fact I'm a Rotarian and uh, Mr. Razak uh, sponsors two of our uh, fundraisers, but apart from that, I've got no uh, interest or knowledge of him. Yeah, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Chair. Just to say that I'm a substitute member of the Development Control Committee. I'm conscious of what Councillor Miller has just said in regard to him being the Chair. I will stay for item six and under the Localism Act, I have a right to make uh, participation, um, but I will bear in mind my comments in regard to the Localism Act and how far I am allowed to go in that debate on this item, where I to eventually be called as the substitute member for DC in that event. Just want to declare that up front. I've got a few hands. Is that everybody declaring the same interest? Because I'm a substitute as well. Councillor Georges, is that what you're declaring, Andy? Councillor McCormack? I'm a full-time yes, member of DC. Um, I would like to reserve the right to speak, and if necessary, I will not sit on DC for the consideration of the planning applications in question. Um, I, I must admit, I, I, I would... Uh, Exactly, do the same thing, frankly. Exactly, as Mr. McCormack has mentioned. Well, hopefully, anything to do with planning really needs to be in the planning meeting, so we shouldn't be really going into that area. So, hopefully, it won't cause a problem. But thank you for letting letting us know, and we'll record that. Okay, number three, urgent items. Um, I've got I've been notified of none. Minutes of the meeting held on the nineteenth of November. If we just go through page by page, if there's any comments. Uh, page page five in the agenda book. Anything on the first page? Okay. Page six, anything on the second page? Pa 
page seven. Is there anything on the third page? Page eight. And then I'll do page nine and 10 together as it's only terminating the meeting on page 10. Okay. Is that, uh, are the minutes agreed? I, I can't move them because I wasn't there. That's several nods, so I'll take that. That was all agreed. Uh, number five, membership of the performance panel. Um, Councillor Janet Westbrook has uh, notified if she wished to come off, so there'll be a Labour representative. And uh, Andy McCormack will take that place. Uh, is there any other uh, changes to that panel that we haven't been notified? That's great. So we'll carry on with that panel as adjusted there. Okay, item six, the Basingstoke Town Football Club, uh, Club briefing paper. I believe uh, Councillor Bean is going to present the paper to start with. Thank you. Am I up and working? Just check. Good. Okay. Um, good evening, members. So um, the report before you this evening seeks to set out the complex and protracted history of the Camrose Stadium and Basingstoke Town Football Club, further to a motion at the council meeting in February. I think it's important to ask, why are we here? Um, we're here ultimately because Basingstoke Town Football Club were left unable to play football at the Camrose ground and forced to play in Winchester. At the request of the newly formed Community Football Club to explore Winkelbury as a new home, a report was presented to CP in July 17, 2017, which discussed the future of Basingstoke Town Football Club. The report set out the council's expectation that the community club should work with Hampshire FA to explore the feasibility of a ground share at Winklebury and that the council would work with both parties to facilitate such an arrangement. In order for the ground share to be achieved at Winklebury Stadium, enhancements are required to meet, to meet the ground grading requirements to allow the community club to play their home games there. These ground grading requirements are the basis for the proposed mitigation required to make the Camrose development acceptable, including the proposed link road um, from Hampshire County Council as Highways Authority to support the much needed improvements to Brighton Hill Roundabout. Sport England is the governing body for sport and is the government's statutory consultee to ensure the protection of playing fields in any planning application that involves developing on sports pitches. As a result, it is the responsibility of Sport England to assess the harm around the loss of the Camrose ground and to comment upon any mitigation proposed as the statutory consultee. Sport England's comments will be material considerations for the council to consider as the local planning authority when the planning application is determined. The MPPF paragraph 97 sets out the national planning policy in relation to development that would result on the building of playing fields and sports land. The consideration and application of this poly in respect of the planning application, together with the comments of Sport England, will be a matter for the council as local planning authority when weighing all the planning material considerations in deciding whether the planning application should be granted. Any mitigation for the loss of the sports pitches with replacement or upgraded facilities will also need to meet the planning tests for planning obligations. <laughs> the future determination of the planning application is not a matter for this meeting as the public partic participation process ensures that objectors will have a chance to comment upon the planning application and the mitigation measures. There has also been much said and reported around the sale of the freehold to Basron and the Camrose Covenant. Appendix 1 contains a number of questions of which answers have been provided for. However, in summary, we have no grounds to influence or manage how the freehold was sold to Basran and no grounds to enforce any covenant as we are not party to the lease. It is also important to call out that at multiple meetings held by the community club, they stated that the covenant was a distraction from their plight and the focus needed to be on bringing the club back to the town. It's also important to note that a separate motion on the future of the football club is being considered at CEP tomorrow evening. Any discussion on the future of the football club should be considered at CEP as this is the appropriate place for this. The report before you this evening is purely focused on the history of the club 
and officers are here this evening to support the committee with any clarification that may be needed on the report. Um, and finally, just to summarise, um, our priority is to invest in high quality sporting facilities across the borough for the benefit of residents and all local clubs to increase participation in sports. Over the last five years, we have made significant investment in sporting facilities across our borough to improve the health and well-being of residents. Most recently, investing up to £152,000 to upgrade Winklebury Football Complex to Grade tick D standard to improve the site for the whole of the community, but also enable Basingstoke Community Football Club to get back to Basingstoke. Um, and that's all um, I'd like to say as an introduction on the paper. Thank you, Chair. Um, rather remiss me, I was going to make a statement before you spoke, so I'll do it now. Some of the points you would have already raised. But the paper before the scrutiny committee this evening specifically to address the history of the Camero Stadium and the Bay State Town Football Club. The CEP will consider tomorrow, the 24th of June, the motion put forward at Council in February regarding how the Council can support the football club to achieve Grade C facility. Therefore, there is a clear difference between this committee looking at the history of the events this evening and the work of CEP will do moving forward, who will look at the future activities. I note that committee members received a letter from the football club on the 22nd of June, outlining a number of issues they are seeking to address moving forward. It is appropriate, therefore, these points are provided to the CEP for their consideration. And for that reason, I will provide a copy of the letter to the CEP chairman. Members are also aware that there is a live planning application for the camera site and I want to take the opportunity to remind the committee that planning issues must be assessed fairly on their planning merits, even when they is predisposition in favour of one side or the other argument or, or the other. Avoiding predetermination or impression of is essential for the, that this reason. It's important that the planning matters involved decisions should not be discussed outside the planning committee as the decision making body for those matters. We will therefore be addressing tonight's matters which should be dealt with either, we will therefore not be addressing tonight's matters, which will be either dealt by the planning process or through the work being undertaken by CEP committee, just so that we don't duplicate work. So um, I, I, as, 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 uh, Count, as Rebecca Emmett or Paul Martin got anything to add to Rebecca B? Um, no, nothing further to add, it, it really is um, now for the committee if there are any questions of clarification on the report. Okay, I'm opening it up. Is anybody wishing to ask any clarifications or questions? Um, uh, Councilman McCormack's indicated. So if Councilman McCormack last ask any questions of clarification. Yeah, it's... um. In terms of where we are and how we got here, um, was it ever the intention to league lock the football club with the Winklebury proposals? And if not, at what point um, did we get to where we were looking at grade D and now it appears that um, grade C is contingent on a number of things that aren't in the scope of this meeting. Um, so in terms of the, the ground grading, um, there are many factors um, involved in achieving satisfactory ground grading. Um, the proposal for Winklebury is to achieve grading D, which is the current level that the community club play at and the facility improvements are underway. CEP is the appropriate place to consider the approach to supporting the club moving forward um, and as per what Councillor Frankham has already stated, the letter will be shared with them for consideration of those points that have been raised. I'm oh, sorry, do you have another point Councillor Cormac? Well, it, it doesn't really answer my question because Right from the outset, when we were having historical discussions about the club, um, 
it was always on the understanding that the club would be playing uh, at grade C. Um, and then all of a sudden we're looking at um, an option with Winklebury and limited consideration other than Winklebury. So it must have been apparent right from the outset, the limitations of Winklebury. So what I want to know is when the considerations were given for Winklebury, um, was there an implicit assumption that the club would be league locked? And, um, you know, what was there an acceptance of that? Um, I think Councillor Bound is going to pick up on your point, Councillor McCormick. Yeah, Councillor Bound, if you'd like to pick up on that for us, please. Well, well I, I think that's a really important question that Councillor McCormick's asking. Uh, I suspect in some respects it sort of looks at where we are through today's position rather than when we were first approached. We were first approached because the football club needed a temporary home and we were asked to see if we could make that happen in Winklebury. Um, so in some respects, we weren't, we weren't considering that as an option. It wasn't a long-term option and with, and with the potential for league locking the club. It was, was there an ability to work with Hans FA to offer a short-term home so they didn't have the issues that they currently have regarding uh, expenditure when playing home games at somebody else's pitch. And with um, probably a, a reality which we, we can see now that says they knew the planning process potentially was going to take a very long time because the club was going to be moved out of the cameras long before a planning application came to the planning authority. Okay. Before we carry on, we have got a visitor wishing to speak, so I should have brought them in for the members. So. Um, Sadie, if you would like to bring in it's um, uh, Steve Williams. I think Councillor McCormick wished to um, register as a speaker as well. Do you still wish to do that, Councillor McCormick? No, I mean, I think um, it would be more beneficial to hear from um, other people connected with the fan base in the club. OK, all right. All right, so it's okay if we could bring Steve Williams in. He is there. Yeah, so his mic's off at the moment. If Steve Will Mr. Williams, if you'd like to make the presentation. Yeah, his, his mic's still off at the moment. I'm afraid I can't control that. I've asked him to unmute. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Mr. Williams. I'll start again then. I should try and keep within the bounds of this meeting. Okay. I trust a key lesson that can be learned tonight is that working collaboratively with the council, with individual councillors and our community is the only way forward. Speaking on behalf of Basingstoke Town Community Football Club, I can say we are delighted and most grateful that the council is investing in Winkleby Football Complex. This will enable us to come back to the town and survive. As a measure of our commitment, we have already invested 58,000 of our own money in Winkleby, but Winkleby is a temporary fix. It is oversubscribed, can't, can't cater for our reserves and midweek teams and contrary to what is suggested in the report we are capped there at grade c just one promotion so as a community club that's a not-for-profit mutual run by its members we are required to add social cultural and economic value to the wider community this means we must look at the medium and longer term as well as the short term. Our progress suggests confidence could be placed in us. In just a year's operation, we have overcome financial challenges, grown our junior teams, expanded our educational academy and are introducing girls and ladies football. So we're asking the council 
and individual councillors to embrace the two stadium status quo. The town has the Camrose and it has Winklebury. And we need to work together and plan long term together for a second stadium, a, a permanent home. Seconds left, 30 seconds left. To progressively replace the, the, the Camrose. Unless we do this, one early result will be that it won't help the development of section 106. Uh, it w may lead to uh, Basron only being able to top up the million pounds that has already been spent on Winklebury. I would also ask that the, there should be the publication of the late local football facility plan, which is, as I understand is That's in an two advanced minutes, state. Just to let you know. That was two minutes. Okay. Do you want to finish your sentence, Mr. Williams? I asked for the publication, even in draft form, of the local football facility plan that I understand is in advanced form, because that will help inform the local planning authority about the way forward. Okay. Uh, the point you've raised is really for CP, but as you make the effort of coming here, I would hope the portfolio holder or an officer will give you a short answer, but I would ask you to come back tomorrow to CEP and the officers can help you with that, because that, that's where they will be discussing that. I'm not registered for C, CEP tomorrow. Can I can I make a, a verbal application now so, uh, so the papers are sent through to me? I understand you've got to register by 10 o'clock on the morning of a meeting. Yeah, so Sadie, can you arrange that for him? Yes, I'll arrange that. Thank you very much. Does any, does the, uh, any, Portfolio holders or I just want to make a comment briefly on that. Uh, Councillor B. <clears throat> um, thank you and thank you, Steve, obviously, for coming along this evening to speak to us. I, I don't think there's any in terms of the commitment of the club and, you know, all the work that's gone into kind of where we are today in terms of the progress that's been made. I think just to reiterate that the points that you've raised are very valid but, but they're not for the purpose of this committee this evening and it really is for, for CEP to start to work up how um, the council sees its role in supporting the football club moving forward so I, I'm not not acknowledging what you've said but this just isn't the right forum for that conversation and certainly it is something that needs to happen um, and obviously as you know that there is a planning application and process that's running alongside this as well. Um, I don't know, actually, perhaps, Paul, if you can give any detail around the um, local football plan as well, just in terms of where that's at. Yeah, for the purposes of the YouTube, Paul Martin is now going to address the committee, one of the officers. Uh, thank you. Uh, basically, the local football facility plan is not a document that's owned by the council. It's um, actually a football foundation and Hans FA led. We have inputted with it with the same lines with all the clubs um, and it's at an advanced stage for further comment however it's not ours necessarily to release um, I believe it is due to be released however through kind of um, furloughing staff at the moment at Hans FA it's just been put on hold until their officers can actually finalise comments Okay, just there anything the members would like to ask Mr Williams? Is there anything further Mr Williams would like to add? Mr Williams has uh, left the meeting, uh, Chair. I didn't leave the meeting. All right, so is there anything you'd like to add? To add? Um, bear in mind that really this needs to be done till tomorrow. But as you made the effort, I want to give you a chance to speak. I think I think I should should just add that uh, that there is a firm cap. That means that we can't progress beyond uh, um, grade C at, at which is step three at, at Winklebury, and and that that is an issue. But also, Winklebury is a victim of his own success. It has been hugely successful, and it means it's over subscribe so it can't cater for all of our teams so as uh councillor bound has said uh, at the meeting on the 27th of february uh winklebury can only be a temporary fix okay 
we'll, we'll pass those details on to. Okay, I'll I'll leave the meeting now. Thank you for your time. Thank you for tolerance. Time. Thank you. Okay, I've been informed Councillor Tilbury indicated earlier that he wishes to speak. If you'd like to speak now. Oh, hello. Hello, we can hear you now. Oh, yeah, great. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, obviously, if we're sticking with questions to the officers at this point in time, I mean, I think the the report's very useful. I think it pulls a lot of this together. But what's very clear is this is a bit of a mess of it. We've had, you know, we start off with a philanthropist back in the 50s, giving the land for a football club for the good of the borough, or as it was in those days. And we somehow ended up with a football club being effectively wiped out and forced out of their own town. And when you look at this, unfortunately, we don't seem to have helped ourselves as a borough council. We seem to have encouraged them to go along with a plan to sort of realise the value of the asset by moving away from the cameras, freeing that up. And that would, you know, we, we were told well, some years ago by Mr. Rizak that that would generate about enough money to pay for a new £10 million stadium. And clearly, no, we're struggling to get a few hundred thousand pounds out of this site. So there's something seriously wrong here. And it's very difficult to see, you know, where we've helped this. And at what point did we first get involved in this, you know, move to another site one? Because Mr. Rizak seems to be claiming that he's the victim in all this, that he was sort of pushed into this by the borough council. In fact, I got a letter to that effect to one of the shareholders uh, that they were sort of, you know, uh, say, well, sorry, this has all gone hideously wrong and I'll give you your, some of your money back. And, you know, but it's the borough council that's to blame. You know, they pushed us into this and... It would it'd be nice if we could have some clarity on whose idea it was to move from the cameras, because that's what set all this in train. I'm sure initially it was a, seen as a sort of a way of helping everyone. But once, you know, we sort of reneged on our part to provide land to them, they've obviously just decided to carry on and with disastrous consequences for the football club. So, I mean, does anyone know the answer to this question? Okay, who, would, who would like to answer that? Um, I, Ellen Taylor, if you'd like to answer. Can help with that, an answer to that question. Do, do we have a response to that? Well, Hel Helen's indication, uh, Taylor Cobb would indicate she'd like to speak, so. Thank you, Chair. Um, so in respect of that question, what I'd like to do is take that away. And the question that I've heard is, um, could we confirm whose idea it was to remove uh, football from the cameras? Have I interpreted that correctly, please? On the other way. No. Yeah. I hope you muted yourself again. You're still muted, Councillor Tilbury. You're still muted, Councillor Tilbury. Yeah, it's not in. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the question is, you know, who first came up with this idea? Did it come from Mr. Razak as a way of generating some income? Did it come from the borough council? Was it sort of an idea? Everyone seems to be a bit vague on this, but it's clearly this is what set all these events in, in train. And, you know, we are where we are now because of this. So it would be useful to know. Thank you. Okay, Helen, Helen will take that away and uh, send us an answer. Call it. I've got indicated from Councillor Taylor and Councillor Harvey that you speak, wish to speak. So, the Councillor Taylor would like to come in next, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, really, I'm interested to know uh, in the history of all of this, how much consultation has gone on with the current users of the Winklebury facilities uh, to establish whether or not they're going to get squeezed out of being able to use the area in the way they would do normally um, and whether or not uh, this is actually going to work for them, not just work for the club. Who would like to answer that? Okay, if, um, Paul Martin would like to give an answer to that. So if we've got to turn over to Mr. Martin. Hi. Um, yes, they, uh, the club did carry out quite a lot of extensive consultation. So we'll all, all along the process, when it comes from funding from Football Foundation, they will discuss with resident clubs. Um, so it happened prior to all of the artificial grass pitch being installed at Winklebury. 
Um, they've got resident and key stakeholders, which are included as Winklebury Wizards, who were highlighted for it, um, Basingstoke Town Community Football, and also they do workplace leagues up there, all of which was discussed. So as part of the LRNA and the Football Foundation, when we look to install artificial pitches across the borough, we do try and strategically place them and carry on consultancy process with all local resident clubs prior to actually applying for the, um, the actual funding investment. Okay, uh, Councillor Harvey indicated you wish to speak. Or as um, Kim, have you got any further, Councillor Container, have you got any further points you want to raise first? Uh, yes, I mean, I, what I'm hearing from that is that consultation has taken place with local football clubs, but I think there are probably more people than that that are engaged with those facilities, and there are other sort of community centre elements and aspects to that as well. Um, so, you know, was the wider community uh, consulted with, you know, road usage, all that, that sort of stuff? Okay, if Mr Martin would like to answer that. Uh, yes, they were. So I know that they consulted Winklebury um, Community Association and they held certain and separate community consultation within the borough and certainly within the local Winklebury community. Uh, the detail of that can be found on the actual planning application for the Winklebury um, and it does go through who's been consulted and discussed. Um, it was tied in, I believe, with some of the, the potential regeneration highlighted from Fort Hill. Um, and there was local communities that were consulted throughout the process. Okay, uh, is there anything else, Councillor Taylor? Before I move on, Councillor Harvey was the next to indicate. Thank you, Chair. Can I thank the officers for the report and for the effort that's gone into producing all the detail that's in here? I do appreciate it, and I'm sure colleagues do as well. And it raises a, a lot of questions, really, in our minds. I've got two areas I'd like to explore with officers and, and the Cabinet, please. Firstly, I'd like to talk about where a lot of this came from, picking up where Councillor Tilbury uh, started the questioning. Who approached who originally? Because we found ourselves in a position, and I'm sure Simon might remember this from his role in the cabinet at the time, in regard to the 15,000 seater stadium. We suddenly found ourselves in the position of having that proposal come forward. The Borough Council offer land for free. We were in a relationship with Mr. Razak and his board at the football club and the Bazaron developments at the same time and so what I'd like to try to understand is how was that arrangement come to? How did the Borough Council get into bed with Bazaron and Mr Razak at the time in the context of that 50,000 seater stadium? Where did it come from? Who approached who? And why was it in a sense never taken forward beyond it when it dropped away? When it died a death because of all the legal challenges, all the things that we went through at the time, it disappeared. And there was no other options on the table and there were no other areas looked at. And I think what I'd just like to try to establish is where the, the baseline of possibilities were, just how far was the borough willing to go then in support of the football club at that time? That's my first question, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bound has uh, indicated what we should answer. So if we start with Councillor Bound. Thank you, Councillor Frankham. Um, I think that Councillor Harvey, the interesting thing, it was actually just before my time in Cabinet. So I picked up, <laughs> yes, doesn't time fly. Um, so the reality is when I came into Cabinet and picked up uh, sports, leisure, physical activity in my portfolio, um, I think it was six months previously, the decision was made, made about Old Common. Uh, yes, and, and actually, um, there was then lots of talk about protecting open spaces. So of course that started, didn't it, as a report and lots of activity within the council. Um, and, and really I was left, um, I want to use the, to describe it as picking up the pieces is how I describe it, um, with wherever Mr. Razak was, uh, with whatever his desire was to either be involved in Basingstoke Town Football Club or not. Um, and actually, so a clear direction of travel where, whether it's Basingstoke Town Football Club Limited or eventually the independent advisory group that was set to run parallel to the existing board and then ultimately the community football club saying, Simon, we need your help to find somewhere because we think we're going to be moved out. 
And of course, as the paper describes, there was all of the concern around Farnborough, which turned into Winchester, and, and actually the club being moved out of the site before any work was taking place, any application. So my involvement was very much um, after that to say, well, actually, what, what is now possible? So I wish I could answer it, but I can't. I don't know if the officers have got anything to say to it or no, no, no indicate. OK, Councillor Harvey, you've got another point you wish, wish to raise. Um, the officers can come back to it with an answer to that. I'd appreciate it. I totally respect the council they and pick the portfolio up after this point. So I guess the question come to officers is, if you're you, Chair, who approached who, when, how did the borough's relationship reach over nearly a million pounds of a land deal? Because we were offering the land for free at the Common. And it was the best part of a million pounds, as was on the, if I remember the reports rightly. So what's changed between then and now in terms of the borough's involvement in this? Is, because that's where we started with what was on the table back then, all those months and years ago with Raphael. So I, I pre the officers can pick that up for me and, and help us with that. I think that's an important point that the town deserves to know where the council started in this. Chair, my second question relates to the 19% ownership that the council has or the 19% that the council has a direct interest in on the land. I'd like to understand how that is controlled, who it is controlled by, and how this borough might exercise its control of that land as landowner or as in a relationship with the land, such that we could influence the situation for the better. Uh, and that's a, a principal question I guess of land ownership purely from a land owning perspective. I'm not interested in the planning side. I just want to know from a borough perspective as a property services or property side, um, what do we do with the 19% and how might we exercise our control over it? Okay, we'll find out how officer would like to answer that. Uh, uh, Helen Taylor Cobb, if you'd like to make, make comment on that, please. Yes, yeah, sorry, Chair, it takes me a while to press the right buttons. Um, yeah. can, can I take that question away to make sure that we get a considered um, answer, please? OK. Thank you. So, so Councillor Harvey, you'll get that in, in future date. Well, could I ask, please, that all of the answers to the questions, could they be made public? Because while we're in a public session now and we're asking these questions publicly, I think the answers should be made public so that people have a right to hear what the answers are. Is that OK? Um, I would like to look at what is um, held inside those contracts. I think um, for me to say at this point that um, I could absolutely publish everything, I wouldn't know what I'm looking at until I've seen it. So could I could I reserve judgment just until I've seen it? Uh, thank you. Fair enough. So you're happy with that, Councillor Harvey? Can I thank the officer? If it is a question of you having to put it on pink papers, would you please inform us as members? Because I think it's important in the public interest that we understand the choices that you're making. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. Okay, you finished, Councillor Harvey? Okay, next I've got Councillor McCormack, as indicated, to speak. Thanks, Chair. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Um, so, we looking at the report, there are a number of venues that have been considered. Um, first was Downgrange with the 15,000 seater option that quickly became um, unfeasible. I think there was also some um, tensions there between the football club, the rugby club and some of the other clubs that, that share the ground and there'd be transport and other residential issues. There's the, the old common um, which again, there were other residential issues. Farnborough has been discussed, but wasn't taken up. Uh, Winchester has been their temporary venue. Were there any other venues considered um, in Basingstoke, uh, like Stratton Park or Gershon Road or Popley Fields, um, that are not in the report? And if they were considered, uh, and we may not have answers tonight, any reasons why they weren't taken forward? Uh, who'd like to answer that one? Uh, uh, Helen Taylor-Cobb, if you'd like to answer that. Um, 
Yes, yeah, so I think uh, the only thing that we can comment on is obviously the information that we have been able to um, uncover through uh, reports and the information that we have. Certainly I can go away and look at that again, but I think we'll be limited to uh, the information that, that we have an audit trail on. I've got, I've got Graham Faulkner and Kate, but I'll just let Andy, uh, Council Cormac finish first, and I'll bring you in, Council Faulkner. And Thank you for the question. Okay, uh, Council Faulkner, if you'd like to come in. You're still on mute, uh, Council Faulkner. That's it, you got it. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, just maybe to help that last point, um, I remember being at scrutiny, was it four or five years ago, um, when we discussed this whole subject, and as I recall, we had about 30 uh, people from the Basingstoke Football Club uh, attending scrutiny. As I recall, Old Common at that point was considered to be the only option, um, the only available land in the borough. Now that obviously can be checked. Um, but at that scrutiny, what then became apparent was um, there was then a lot of opposition to it. So whereas the football club and and the council were moving on that line. I don't think it was anticipated what option were, there, there would be. And from the scrutiny committee's point of view, it's it's disappeared until until today. Any any officers or portfolio wish to comment on that? Uh, Councillor Bound, if you'd like to answer. All I was going to say, really, thank you, Chair, for, for completeness, I think it's important that say, to, to say, uh, probably in my time as portfolio holder, I had no end of people suggesting places. Um, and of course, um, I think about the, the, the question, um, whenever it was at full council from Steve Frango, an ex-player of the club, who was just listing open spaces and saying, is it possible, is it possible? And, and I just want to be very clear that, you know, my, my honest answer to those questions were, nothing's impossible, but actually for probably every bit of open space, somebody who was keen to point at, I can think of 101 reasons why it would be incredibly difficult. So I, just, for, just for, again, just for completeness, um, all sorts of people have talked about all sorts of places and, when, and whether that I've been approached over the years by people individually on the telephone, in fan forum conversations, um, even by individual councillors going, do you know what, I'd give up my open space. Um, but actually, I, I'm not sure I'd call that a, a proper and formal options appraisal. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bound, if you'd like to bring in. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, Councillor Kim Taylor, would you like to come in? Uh, thank you, Chair. It may well be this is more appropriate to uh, think about in, in CEP, but I think the question of pulling together some of these comments that have been made, uh, Councillor Harvey, for example, uh, made the point that at, at one point in time, the, the, the council was prepared to um, you know, cough up some land and presumably at that case, uh, Basron Developments would be looking at doing whatever they had to do to, to put a, 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 a football stadium there. Um, I mean, obviously, in CEP have actually recently and we have had recently some significant assessments of various different bits of land throughout the borough um, in connection with the ice rink. So actually we've been thinking about land, haven't we, and how it might be used and, and what issues there might be with that in connection with potentially putting a rink on. And I'm guessing some of those issues might be fairly similar in respect of uh, a football ground. So it could well be that actually we should be winding back a bit finding out you know how we got to the point where we were prepared to say let's stomp up some land and and move forward getting a new stadia on there um and see whether or not that isn't actually uh something we shouldn't be, be thinking about because if we were in a position to be prepared to do that historically is there any reason why we wouldn't be in a position it wouldn't be prepared to do that 
now. Um, and, and we now have the, the, the benefit of some, uh, some additional work that's been done on assessing some of these sites in, in significant detail. So, I mean, maybe that is just something we need to, need to be thinking about in connection with finding out what assessments were done on these various bits of land and how we arrived at a position where one minute we were prepared to stomp up a bit of land and, and have a new stadium, and, 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 and now we're not. Hey, Council Rebecca Beans indicated you'd like to answer that. If you'd like to come in. Yeah. So, um, I mean, obviously, we've committed to take the question away from Councillor Harvey, but my understanding is that there was an options appraisal of sites carried out some time ago. Um, and there was a, um, in January 2016, I think, um, Cabinet agreed a recommendation that there was no available or appropriate land. Um, and to your point, Councillor Taylor, um, I mean, potentially, yes, the council can, could look again or revisit that, but, but that comes back into the conversation really for CEP in terms of what does the council support look like for the club in the future, being mindful also, as we've said this evening, that there is a planning application ongoing in terms of the cameras and, and what the appropriate mitigation for that is. I don't know if any officers want to add anything else, but... Uh, uh, Helen Taylor Cobb, if you'd like, like to come in. Yeah, so um, I'm just, um, I, su I support what um, Councillor Beans just suggested there in terms of uh, moving this um, to CEP as part of the questions there um, and picking up the question that's been raised of us in terms of the historical aspect. Uh, thank you. The council, uh, Councillor Beans, do you want to come back in on that point? Yeah, I, I think that the only other thing um, that I, I want to add is that the ice rink is slightly different to the cameras in the sense that obviously the cameras is, is privately owned, but we do fundamentally own the ice rink sites. So I just, they, they are different. Um, I just don't want to confuse the two as, as being the same in nature because they're not. Uh, Councillor uh, Taylor, has that answered your question? Uh, sort of, other than to say that obviously there is a difference between the ice rink and the uh, and, and the football situation. But in terms of size, shape, and technical diff difficulties with land, they would be broadly similar. You know, transport, transport, parking. Uh, you know, the size of the the. You know, we we were told about ice rinks in the context of size of football pitches, for example. So I think that you know, in terms of looking at land, we could usefully repurpose some of that 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 work. Uh, if, when we look at the historical element uh, that's been raised by Councillor Harvey, um, you know, we find that we were prepared to do this at one point. You know, but we perhaps need to establish why we're not now. Who'd like to answer that? Uh, and I, I don't think there was a, there was a question it, it was more of a, a statement really but you know as I said in terms of we'll we'll come back with the history but any conversations around what we may do in the future is certainly to be discussed at CEP rather than here this evening. Okay, thank you. Have you got anything else Councillor Taylor? Not really, other than I guess that time will be of the essence with this with CEP as well, because if there are these uh, planning applications outstanding and presumably some form of assessment needs to be taken, uh, what might be proposed for the future is relevant in that assessment. I don't want to discuss the actual nature of the assessment, but presumably the timing elements uh, uh, need to be thought about. Okay. I'm going to leave that for CEP to pick up tomorrow. Because that, that's the more important place. Uh, Councillor Har Harvey indicated a little while ago. Do you still wish to speak? Oh. And we seem to have lost Councillor Harvey as well now. Okay, if he else wants to speak. Okay, if that, that's the case, this paper, oh, Councillor McCormack, you wish to speak. Yeah, it's just in passing, um, when we're considering as a scrutiny committee the past history of Basingstoke in, in similar positions, Thornycroft FC and Basingstoke FC, uh, so the uh, the two stadium 
um, aspiration has was a, a point, first of all, to thank Rebecca and Simon for all their work on this from a cabinet perspective, but appreciating the amount of issues that they've picked up in different ways at different stages of their cabinet roles. Um, but just to say, when were we prepared, just picking up the two stadium point, when are we prepared or have we ever been prepared as a council from a leisure policy point of view to accept a lesser than two stadiums or lesser than stadium option? Is that actually, from a, just from a policy point of view and a leisure side of things, is that a policy that we're willing to accept? I'm not talking planning and I'm not talking land ownership, just purely from a leisure perspective. Uh, are we willing to accept that as a council, as a position? And I apologise if that's already been asked. Who'd, who'd like to answer that? No one indicating. Uh, uh, Mr. Martin, if you'd like to answer. Uh, Councillor Harvey, in, in terms of policy wise, um, there's nothing set in stone in terms of policy for the options of the two stadiums. Again, back in 2015 when the LRNA was done, I believe in terms of that the Camrose was not included in that study purely for the fact that it was um, a kind of more of a commercial entity rather than a community facility at that time. Um, again, I'd have to go back into it to double check that the actual inclusion of the stadium policy was Winklebury. And then obviously the discussions in terms of enhancement or what we said in the statement was for England to enhance the one facility rather than the two facilities policy bound. Councillor Bound, do you want, wish to add to that? Well, I, I do, and, and it isn't always covered in policy, but of course also one of the things that was very clear to me when I got in, involved in it was actually, we've also got a very different proposition um, from the Camrose and the football club now to what we had historically. The one thing that everybody told me about the football club when I picked up the portfolio was they did very little in the community. They weren't very welcoming at the Camrose for other teams. And, and actually that's very different to the proposition we have now with the community football club who are doing lots of things for youth football, doing lots of things to support uh, women's football and community involvement. Uh, and, and I think that's just also just really important that we, we aren't in some respects, fortunately and unfortunately, looking at apples and pears as far as over the historic period, Basingstoke Town Football Club Limited wasn't held in very well, a very high regard with how it operated in the community and lots of people and partners who wouldn't work with them. Okay, Councillor Harvey, is anything you wish to add? You turned your mic off, Councillor Harvey. Is that better? Thank you, sorry. Um, thank you, Simon. I, I mean, the only thing to add to that, and I know this isn't on your or Rebecca's watch, this has got nothing to do with you because it was before your time. But doesn't that then beg the question, if that was the sort of strenuous relationship that you had to go through and now we're in a better place because of what the, the relationship is with the newer the community development, then why in the world was the council getting to bed with those people all those years ago to provide a stadium, a 15,000 seater stadium and the land in the way we were? It is like you say, chalk and cheese and just trying to understand what was then, how we got through all that you've been involved with to where we are now is a part of obviously what the scrutiny committee is looking at and if officers can help us understand that that's an important thing but i do i respect what you're saying uh, well and, and also of course the facilities we're talking about are different aren't they because in some respects the 15,000 seat stadium was also offering very different benefits that were much wider than football and and what the cameras could offer thank thanks councillor bound is that the end of what you wish to ask at the moment mr harvey yeah thank you uh does anybody else wish to speak? I've got no one on my list at the moment. Okay, this particular paper is for noting, so can I ask the committee, will they note the paper please? And I'll move on. The next agenda item is a review, a review of the work uh, programme, so that uh, now that um, Councillor Miller can come back in. Councillor Miller, if you're still there, you can come back in. Thank 
Councillor Miller appears to have, um, have left the meeting, Councillor Franken. Okay. Yeah. Are there any suggestions or future work programme? Uh, any members wish to suggest at this point? We have got a list of the current ones, the current one on the back of the paperwork. So I'm, lo I'm looking for, I obviously don't want to overload the committee with loads, but are there anything specifically we would suggest? Councillor Harvey. <coughs> Um, given the current situation that the council finds itself in and our whole community and country find themselves in, would it not be appropriate at some time um, to have the scrutiny committee review the financial situation that the council finds itself in as a result of COVID, the issues around the future funding and the budgets of the authority in good time in the run up for next year's budget, seeing as we're now where we are now, surely uh, the officers can help us understand where we are going forward and I think that's an important piece of scrutiny. I'm not talking about audit and accounts doing a piece of forward looking in that sense of policy setting, but a piece of understanding what the council has done and where its position is at, given everything that we're facing. Well, we must have very psychic officers because we were discussing in the pre-meeting. So yeah, if Sue uh, could, could come in and uh, say what we discussed earlier. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yes, Councillor Harvey, um, I would propose an item for the work programme in September. So we're anticipating bringing an update to Cabinet um, at the beginning of September, so it would be appropriate for Chairman to reach me in September on the work programme. Okay, anybody else got any ideas or suggestions that they wish to bring to the uh, work programme? We can still add stuff at the future date, normally we're doing things in autumn, but it's just if there's anything the committee has died, uh, got an urge to bring forward. Councilman Cormack, you indicated. Well, much of what I wanted to say has already been said, but I think if we are looking at COVID-19, I think we ought to have a, uh, a a wider look at our response and, you know, any lessons that can be learned. Um, that may be a fairly wide ranging piece of work because we may wish to scrutinise the functions of the County Council, the local resilience forum or central government. Uh, but I put a placeholder on that now um, just in case something gets said at full council or future full council yeah i'd like to address some issues around the covid and decision making um but if i go to councillor kim taylor because she could indicate it uh yes actually i think that um one of the things that i would like us to look at and to scrutinise, obviously, it, it, apart from, you know, as Council McCormick has said, the wider application of emergency powers during this um, COVID uh, pandemic, is to have a good look at how we, um, a reflective sort of uh, consideration and a, a scrutinise our, our approach of, of how we supported the community um in it during the, the the pandemic in terms of um the action that we we've taken the money that we've given to people how effective was that was that the right way of doing it or should we have done more things ourselves as a council rather than as it were give money uh, to, to to others so um you know, I'm just. I just feel that that, that is that is there an opportunity for us to scrutinise uh, how we um, reacted and responded to providing community support, um, and also I'd I'd quite like to, and I don't know quite how we how we do this. Look at how as uh, scrutinise how un under that we supported councillors during this period, specifically in their role as councillors, not just as attendees at committees, but in their roles in, as councillors in the community. Um, things like making sure they had facilities to um, uh, uh, be in contact with residents, for example, video conferencing, all those sorts of things. So, so I, I'd like to sort of look at those two, two things if that's possible, if it's relevant for this uh, to be done in this way. Okay, Sue, would you like to respond to that? Uh, yeah, so um, on the first points, um, there is an intention to bring a summary report, uh, possibly to Cabinet and Council, which obviously can obviously then come to scrutiny, which does look at, um, if you like, the response to COVID, um, but will probably reflect on financial recovery, economic recovery and support to the community. 
Um, so I think that could certainly come to a future future meeting. Um, I would like to take it offline though, in terms of uh, understanding which meeting that can come to. Um, and it might be appropriate for it to also come to a September meeting, given that there isn't one in August, um, alongside the financial response, if you like. Um, in terms of the uh, other um, requests, in terms of support to councillors, um, certainly um, we can pick that up and see what information we can provide. Um, and that may well be able to come back to a, a, an earlier meeting. Um, so I don't know if Sadie can confirm it. Is there one in July? Uh, I believe there is, yes. Yeah, so if we aim for a July meeting in terms of the uh, response and support to councillors, um, but would, um, would suggest um, the update generally in terms of response um, in September, because obviously we are still responding um, and the situation <laughs> may change. Who knows, it might spike again, let's hope not. Could, could I just make a request please as well that these uh, suggestions are, are sort of um, detailed out in work suggestion forms if possible or just in a in a sort of defined email just so that we have these on on record and we know exactly what the scrutiny committee would like to look at right yeah and uh, miller you're indicating you like to come in if, yeah, just to make a comment, if you stuck the end out of Zoom, getting back into it is not easy. I heard you all all the way there, but I had no video. But anyway, uh, can I just, I must have missed it. Um, are we still going to run the uh, S106 part of the work program? Uh, Councillor Miller, if you'd like to continue with that task and finish group, yes, you would lead on that. Absolutely. And we made a lot of progress. Uh, I will follow it up with Kieran, uh, Kieran Hanjan. Um, I'm in contact with her anyway. She's my counterpart on, on forces. Um, and I will bring a report to the next scrutiny committee and yeah. let you know the progress because we did get quite a long way with that. Um, some of the councillors might be aware, but we've got a process laid out and how it's going to be continued so i'll give you a progress update um and when did you say the next scrutiny is going to be in july july meeting and it's september after that uh can i make it september um you might have gathered i'm kind of busy in july um yeah that'd be three items on the agenda so i'll be conscious i won't want to put much more on because they're quite meaty items my my report will be factual uh, it will be tabled. It will be in front of you. You can ask some questions, but I do not intend it to be, I wouldn't put it to, to you, Paul, to have a, a protracted session in that particular item. It's progress and to be noted. Um, and it'll be before the end of the year before we have something substantive, I'm quite sure, because we've all been deviated, uh, as I just heard from Sir Gurdon, on rather a lot of other matters. But I've got four DCs in June, just uh, July. Just to confirm all that the next meeting is the 21st of July. Okay, then if you, so if September would be fine, I'm just conscious that we don't want to overload any of the committee meetings. I don't want to be here at 12 o'clock still talking to you. Um, okay, is there, is there anything else? I think we've, we've got a couple of items we can now take forward as, as a work programme. There is a form if you want to put anything else on in the future. I think we've finished with that item. In that case, that's the end of the agenda. I'd just like to take this moment to thank all the officers for all the support they've given me for my, to help me with the chairing of the first scrutiny committee. And being on Zoom, it's a lot different than being in, in a council chamber or in the uh, committee meetings. I had a few technical things that do add to it. So thank, thank you very much to the officers for all their support. And I'll declare the meeting over. <laughs>